Learning NeoVim has been the most enjoyable experience for me as a developer. In this video, I'm going to quickly talk about what NeoVim is, the goods and the bads, and then I'm going to quick, very beginner friendly demo on NeoVim. So, first things first, a little background. So, I've been learning NeoVim for about a month now, and I've been really enjoying it. All right, there's the hard part with the learning curve and getting used to it, right? And then, but after that, like I'm still learning, obviously. It's only been a month, but I'm it's I'm to the point where I can look at a text file or code and I can quickly kind of do what I want. If I need to, I'll quickly refer to a cheat sheet. Well, it's not a big issue. Okay, so the goods are, it is very fun. It is a whole new experience because being able to realize that you can do all these things with just your keyboard, you like unlock this new power and your brain is like very satisfied. I mean, it depends on, on you as a person. You could find it very annoying that you're trying to do this thing and obviously you normally would be able to do it with a mouse because it's very easy. But then it's like, oh, now I gotta look it up. And then it's that constant like learning something new, that constant back and forth of like, gotta refer back to it. Like if you, let's say you've been a coder, but you've been with 20 years, but you never use any of them. Now it's like, oh, I'm so used to this. That this feels weird. Like it's an instinct because everything you do is based around using the mouse to navigate and then typing wherever you want and pressing backspace and doing all these different things. So that's that's kind of a bad, but I would still say, like I said, it depends on the person. And I kind of talk about that more in the like, should you give it a try in that section? But another good is that it is very rewarding like I said kind of overcoming that initial barrier of like ah oh, this feels weird like uncomfortable feeling it, I would say it's worth it and yeah I would say those are the main two there's more things that are very minute I said those are the two main things like I, said, I don't want to make the video too long and I say for the bad is that again it depends on who you are as a person if you don't have the patience to sit there and try and figure out how to do the things you've been doing for a while how to do them a different a completely different way then I wouldn't do it because you're just going to end up being very frustrated or if you're like what if I'm not that good at touch typing? Then there's two solutions. You can either get better at touch typing or just avoid it because I would say you need, you definitely need to be pretty decent at touch typing to fully get the uses out of NeoVim. I mean, I still look at it sometimes, but that's just come some, some features or some keybinds are with using special characters like the carrot sign all that you normally won't use but you can also just rebind it which is the best part about Neva you can rebind it to what feels comfortable and what you like but yeah now I'm going to talk about what exactly is NeoVim NeoVim is a hyper extensible keyboard driven text editor allowing you to never have to take your hands off the keyboard due to it being written in Lua you can easily customize it how you like it or you can take a look at the plugins made by the community to further enhance your productivity. Should you give NeoVim a try if you've never tried it before? So I think there's three questions to ask yourself if you figure out if you want to use NeoVim or not. The first question, are you willing to endure pain for the short term? And what I mean by that is, since it's such a new experience, you're going to have a lot of like doubt like while doing it if you want to keep doing it or not and if you're willing to stick through that you just know yourself as a person you're someone that like won't, if you are interested in doing something you are willing to stick it out through the hard times then I would go with it the second point I have is, are you comfortable with touch typing because if you have to look down at your keyboard and do that it's going to be a lot slower and I just think you're, you aren't really going to benefit pretty much at all if you're sitting there just looking at it 
because the point of him is to be able to look at your screen and it just i think it's kind of like it assumes that you know how to touch type and then my third and final one is do you want to be more optimal do you care about being like as optimal as possible or are you fine with comfortably coding how you normally code like do you really because it's not it's not required it's more so like a are you type of person that wants to be more optimal about things and if you find an approach you like are you willing to learn that approach over the old way of doing it which kind of ties back on the second one but yeah i would say depending on those three if you can answer all three of those with yes then i would do it because like i said i've enjoyed it so much and i would highly recommend it to most people Okay, so first things first, I'm going to move around any of them. You want to use H to go left, L to go right, and J to go down, K to go up. So kind of practice with that and get comfortable with that is the first thing because you're going to be switching to trying to use keyboard exclusively. You can use arrow keys, but I would highly advise against it because it is a lot easier keeping your hands on the home row and so take our attention here real quick you will notice there's three different modes in any of them first normal mode which is like you see now just being able to move around with the cursor and then we have insert mode which comes to allow you to press i come here and add text and to escape insert mode go back to normal mode you press escape and so to undo all this i can just press u and so let's say we want to go to the end of the line, we press dollar sign. Let's go back to the start of the line, press zero. That's something interesting. If I come in here and add space, and I press zero, zero takes you to the start of the line, even if there's space. If I want to go to the start of the first character, I would come in here and press caret sign. Now, any of them has a lot of those like nuances. We kind of learn about those as you go and like what's best. And let's say we want to insert text, right? Come in here and press O, and it inserts, goes to insert mode and allows you to type on the next line underneath. And to this line above, you would press Shift O. You see, I can ins exit, add another line to it. And so, let's say I want to. I know exactly where I want to go. Let's say I want to go to the middle of the line. I want to go to where it says tutorial. I can press FT and keep pressing FT. Take it. To, there's also a quick way. Let's go back to the start of the line. Let's press FT. F for find and then the character you want to look for. And then you can press semicolon to repeat that. So semicolon basically repeats your last action. So there's a quick way of doing that. So to go to the start of the file, press H, Shift H, Shift L to go to the bottom, and Shift M to go to the middle of the file. Of the file, I mean, you know, half page down, half page up. To so go half page down, you press Control D. Half page up, you press Control U. And another way to also navigate is if you want to navigate by paragraph. So you can press the curly brackets, shift curly bracket to go down, you can hold it, left curly bracket to go up. And a little bit more advanced, let's say we want to delete this entire paragraph. You can say D for delete, I for inside, and P. And a good way to think of it is to have all those associations with the letters like D is for delete, O is for open, like going for the next line, P for paste, Y for yank, which means to copy. So in any of them you can combine operators with the function that you want to do. So for example, D I W means to delete in word. And that means you see it didn't get rid of the spaces, it only gets rid of the word. But if I come in here and do the traditional way, which is this double D, it deletes that line and brings up the line underneath it up. And like I said, there's nuances where you don't want to do that. So you say, I just want to get rid of 
this sentence, but I don't want to get rid of, but I want to keep that space there. So I type DIS, and it allows me to delete that sentence, and then I see like that, it stays there, and it keeps that space, res preserves that space for it. Like I said, DIW, DIS, and DIP are the main ones you want to use. And finally, for quitting, you can use either QA exclamation mark to force quit, or you can use QW for to quit and write, which saves your file. But you can't add, you can't edit this one. And that's it for this video. If you enjoyed this video, thank you for watching. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Until next time.